Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of News Dose where I give you all of the latest gaming news. And yet again, there is another Perfect Dark reboot rumor floating around out there right now. Whether this game is real or not, there sure is a lot of smoke around Perfect Dark happening, but we'll talk about that here in just a moment. We also got another big announcement for Xbox Game Pass today, as the first wave of games for the month of May was announced, which includes one of the best RPGs to ever be made. By this point, it's not even really all that surprising, because they just consistently put out great games every month. But before we get into all of that, we do have some other stuff to talk about as well, so let's go over everything that's happening across the game industry. To start things off, the new trailer for The Last of Us Part 2 released today and, well, you know, Naughty Dog just cannot stay away from controversy right now. It's actually very unfortunate, but I do think the trailer looks really good. That's just my opinion, of course, but out of all of the videos that I've seen for The Last of Us Part 2, I think this was the best one that they've put out there. However, based off the like to dislike ratio on YouTube, fans do not agree with that. The trailer is getting a ton of dislikes on YouTube to the point Sony did disable fans from having the option to like the video. However, if you do go check this trailer out on GameSpot or IGN's YouTube channel, you will figure out the reason as to why. On both of those channels, around 40 to 50% of the ratings are negative, which is not a good sign at all. This is more than likely related to the recent leak that fans apparently did not like too much. The main question now though, is how will this affect the launch of The Last of Us Part 2? Honestly, I don't really think it will have that much of an effect at all. I think this game will sell a ton and I think it will review really high as well. I mean, if we look at last year, Pokemon Sword and Shield went through a lot of controversy as well, leading into its release and leaks did kind of affect that game and how much controversy there was, but it still sold a ton when it released. Now, I know this is a different situation with The Last of Us Part 2, but I don't think this will have a major impact. I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens though, but for the time being, fans definitely do not seem to be happy with this game based off the like to dislike ratio. I still do like the trailer, but that's just my opinion. What about you though? Did you like the new trailer for The Last of Us Part 2? Let me know in the comments below. In other news, there was a very weird leak today. So apparently the cancelled Prince of Persia Redemption was leaked on YouTube and has 3 minutes of cinematic gameplay footage that kind of reminds me of something like the Uncharted franchise. Now I'm not going to post the footage of the video here for copyright reasons, but there is footage out there if you want to go look it up. I can't guarantee it won't be taken down, but what's interesting here is that this video leaked back in 2012. That's how long this video has been on YouTube. It's been on YouTube for 8 years, but up until today has went largely unnoticed with only around 150 views before today. That's just crazy and how this game went so unnoticed for this long, but truthfully, the game looked really good. As I said before, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the Uncharted franchise and how it works with all these cinematic set pieces but throw in some Assassin's Creed-like mechanics with the Prince of Persia time manipulation, and yeah, it looked pretty good. I'm actually a little surprised this game did get cancelled. I imagine some of the more hardcore Prince of Persia fans are going to be a little upset knowing that this game got cancelled when it looked as good as it did. With that said though, we did just talk about this yesterday, but Ubisoft did register a domain for Prince of Persia 6 here recently. So it is very possible that Ubisoft is working on a Prince of Persia game, so don't lose all hope just yet. And hey, maybe they can even salvage some of the mechanics from Redemption. I mean, there's still no guarantee or anything that they are working on a new Prince of Persia game, but there are signs at the very least. So, like I said, don't lose hope just yet. Moving on though, we got two new game related announcements today that I will talk about real quick. First up we have some Mortal Kombat 11 DLC, Aftermath, which actually looks like a pretty beefy update. It will continue the story from where it left off, adding 4 new characters, Shiva, Fusion, and a surprise guest character, Robocop. I definitely was not expecting that, but this update does look really good. Mortal Kombat does have one of the better stories for fighting games, so I'm sure people will want to jump in for that reason alone, and then they have the addition of all the new characters. It also has things like stage fatalities, but most importantly, 
you don't really have to wait too long to play it because it will be out on May 26 for $40. So it's going to be right around the corner. Now also a game by the name of Ghost Runner showed off a new cinematic today, though I'm going to show off some gameplay instead. It reminds me a lot of Mirror's Edge mixed in with some Titanfall, both of which are great games, so not bad inspirations there. I think this game has a lot of potential to surprise some people, but that's the thing. It's not really all that well known as of this moment. Well, that can all change today because it was announced to have a limited time demo starting today all the way through the 13th on Steam. You can go download that right now and see if you like Ghost Runner or not. I thought I'd give you a little heads up on that and hey, it may give you something fun to do over the next week. Now onto some of the Xbox related content, so let's talk about Perfect Dark because once again, there is another rumor that a new Perfect Dark game is in development. Pretty much everybody by this point is expecting some kind of Perfect Dark announcement by Xbox's all-star studio, The Initiative, which is set to announce a new game sometime this year and that would likely be in July when the Xbox Studio event is happening. Now, there still is no confirmation that a new Perfect Dark reboot is actually happening, so don't take this that way, but a journalist by the name of Sabi, which is also a well-known insider after leaking pretty much the entire Nintendo E3 conference back in 2019, very accurately I must say, has now mentioned that he or she is hearing Perfect Dark, Fable 4, and Halo Infinite were all planned to be shown this month, but has since been pushed back for obvious reasons. Now, Sabi did say that this is not their usual sources, but they still are rarely wrong. But still, even then, do take this information with a grain of salt. The main reason I wanted to talk about this briefly is just because of how much smoke there is surrounding a new Perfect Dark reboot by this point. We have talked about it pretty extensively on this channel in the past. I personally hope it's true, but you know, it might just be an insider trying to play guesswork based off speculation. I mean, I think almost everybody is expecting Halo Infinite and Fable 4 to be shown, so it's not really too hard to guess those. What do you think though? Do you think Xbox is actually working on a new Perfect Dark game? Let me know in the comments below. Also, Xbox Game Pass continues to excel as it once again announced a brand new wave of Xbox Game Pass games for the month of May. You do have to remember this is only the first wave, so do expect more Game Pass announcements throughout the month, but the console version includes Red Dead Redemption 2, Final Fantasy IX, DayZ, and Fractured Minds. Of course, the big one here is Red Dead Redemption 2, one of the best games of the entire decade heading over to Xbox Game Pass on May 7th. That is huge, but we did talk about this last week. Final Fantasy IX though, that's one of the best RPGs to ever be made. Honestly, if you haven't played that game for whatever reason, and you have Xbox Game Pass, you need to go check that game out. The thing about these old Final Fantasy games are that they aged incredibly well. So do yourself a favor and go play Final Fantasy IX and you'll understand why people love that game just so much. Xbox Game Pass was not finished there though because the PC games was also announced and will also be getting Final Fantasy IX but will be getting Endless Legend, a strategy game, and Halo 2 Anniversary. That's a huge announcement as well. PC fans, you're going to get to play Halo 2 Anniversary on your PC this month through Xbox Game Pass for PC. Honestly, that's almost unbelievable. We are now in a time when PC fans can enjoy Halo, and in my opinion, Halo 2 may possibly be the best Halo ever. It's pretty close with 2 or 3 for me, and for me, being able to play Halo with a mouse in specific, that is the most incredible part about all of this. I love this news and what Xbox is doing right now, but once again, Xbox Game Pass is absolutely crushing it with more great games. I think it's just to be expected by this point though, honestly. It's such an incredible service, and again, that's just the first wave for this month. Do expect more games to be announced for Game Pass throughout the rest of the month, and as always, I will let you know when it happens, so keep watching if you want to keep up to date. Now we do have two more topics to talk about, one of which is that EA will be apparently releasing multiple games for the Nintendo Switch throughout 2020. 
it's probably about time too considering the Nintendo Switch has sold a significant amount of consoles and EA still hasn't really supported it all that well so far. What are they going to release for the Switch though? That's a good question. And I started thinking about it and I think we are going to see two different routes here. Maybe EA releases some newer games for the Switch. Maybe we get Apex Legends or something like Madden. I mean, honestly, why is Madden not on the Nintendo Switch? That to me is just shocking. Also, there is Titanfall, and I think that could run on the Switch. We are seeing some of these big AAA games go over to the Switch, like The Witcher 3. You have Dark Souls and some other games such as that. So why not? But with that said, I believe EA also may start porting some of their older popular titles to the Switch as well. The Switch does an incredible job at selling older ports, and I do understand not everybody likes that. Some people want new games, but I've said this for a long time now, but being able to play some of these older games on a handheld device is a dream come true, and I do think that is why they sell just so well. So what are some of these games that they could port though? The Mass Effect trilogy immediately comes to mind. That would be awesome to be able to play on the Nintendo Switch, and honestly, I would probably buy that day one. That was an, an amazing franchise, and even though the first game hasn't really aged that well, or at least in my opinion, I do think the second and the third has aged really well. Also, what about Dead Space? It almost seems like EA has somehow forgotten that they have Dead Space, but that's a really good franchise, and that would be really cool to see on the Switch as well. For that matter, the Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare games would be really cool to have on the Switch. I think that would fit really well. But that is the thing. I mean, EA has plenty of franchises that they could bring over to the Switch. So why not? They'll make extra money and fans will be happy. EA to me just doesn't make sense sometimes, but that's a whole different topic. But if you could pick any EA game to be ported over to the Switch, what would you pick in specific? Let me know. And for the last topic of the day, and this will be real quick. So the Summer Game Fest was announced a few days ago where new games and events will be shown throughout the next couple of months. This of course will be the replacement to E3 along with the IGN Summer of Games as well. The Summer Fest though all starts tomorrow with Inside Xbox, which I'm super excited for. But apparently there is going to be some kind of surprise announcement for next week. I have no idea what this surprise announcement could possibly be, but whatever it is will be shown on May 12th, so mark your calendars. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to hit the bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Peace out.